This is my video for Remote Sensing of Global Change at the University of Edinburgh. My chosen topic is the Thermal Remote Sensing of Volcanoes. There are over 600 active volcanoes on Earth, with 50 to 70 actually erupting each year. Volcanoes represent a serious potential danger for both the environment and population. In densely populated areas, lava flows and pyroclastic emissions, to name a few, may pose a serious risk to local people and infrastructure. Even at large distances, the effect of an eruption can be huge, such as the Ilafegioko eruption in Iceland, which caused 20 countries to close their airspace and affected more than 100,000 travellers. Many active volcanoes in the world are located in remote or inaccessible areas, where ground-based devices are generally inadequately applied. So one way to monitor volcanoes is by remote sensing. Satellite remote sensing uniquely has provided the synoptic perspective for in-situ measurements on local, spatial and variable temporal resolution, while minimising the exposure to potential volcanic hazards. Volcanism raises the local geothermal heat flux, both geographically and temporally. Instruments on board orbiting spacecraft allow us to quantify these variations. Earth orbiting satellites provide data routinely at low recurrent cost, rather than by aircraft campaigns, which are somewhat briefer. There is a need for near real time volcano activity monitoring, and I will particularly focus on the monitoring of thermal features of volcanoes. To measure temperatures remotely, we use Planck's radiation law, which governs the relationship between the absolute temperature of a body and the emitted power per unit area per unit wavelength. In thermal remote sensing, we usually use a version of the Planck function adapted to give values of spectral radiance. From the graph, it is clear that emitted spectral radiance increases with temperature over the entire wavelength range, and the hotter the emitting body, the shorter the wavelength of peak thermal emittance. This is equivalent to Vine's law. The wavelengths emitted by radiating bodies, such as lava lakes or hotspots, can be detected by sensors on board satellites. There are various sensors on board satellites that can be used for the thermal remote sensing of volcanoes. The height of the satellite above the Earth's surface will determine the time it takes the satellite to complete one orbit of the Earth. Low Earth orbits are sun-synchronous, pass over the poles and are near circular, known as polar orbits. Therefore, they are inclined at a high angle to allow the orbit to process around the Earth at the same rate that the Earth rotates about the Sun. In this diagram, it is clear that as satellite height increases, the orbital period also increases. This is why polar orbiting satellites, such as the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association satellite and the Earth Observing System, are used for the monitoring of volcanoes as they can detect thermal changes as they take only roughly 100 minutes to orbit the Earth. They contain the Advanced Very High Resolution Radiometer and the Moderate Resolution Imaging Spectro Radiometer, respectively, and these are the two remote sensors that I shall focus on in more detail. The AVHRR is a polar orbiter at 833 kilometres altitude. It takes 101 minutes to orbit the whole Earth and makes 14.2 orbits a day. This high sampling frequency makes it ideal for near real-time monitoring of volcanoes. It can detect if there are any changes in the radiance of the volcano and define its location of any anomalous temperature measurements. The AVHRR mostly uses mid-infrared and thermal-infrared wavelengths to detect thermal anomalies. The thermal-infrared sensors can detect well-crusted lava flows and crater lakes of warm acidic water. The mid-infrared channels are much more useful, as the thermal emittance increases much more rapidly in this wavelength region than at the longer thermal-infrared wavelengths. It has a resolution at nadir of 1.09 km, which is very low spatial resolution but its high temporal resolution has proven to be effective at eruption monitoring, despite that the volcano's features of interest 
are usually much smaller than the nominal pixel size of the AVHRR. The MUTA sensor is found on board the Earth Observing System platforms of Terra and Aqua. It flies at a low altitude of 705 kilometres. It orbits the Earth every 99 minutes and has full global coverage every one to two days. It has a high spatial resolution of 250, 500 and 1000 metres. It can detect radiation in the short and long wavelength infrared regions which is 4 micrometers and 12 micrometers respectively. It possesses 10 wave bands, of which 3 are used in certain algorithms which detect emitted radiance at a spatial resolution of 1 kilometers. This high spatial resolution allows its image pixels to be roughly 200 meters. This makes it an ideal source for automatically detecting and monitoring high temperature volcanic thermal anomalies. One disadvantage is that at high latitudes, adjacent swaths overlap, so with high temporal resolution, but at low altitudes, gaps occur between the two swaths, which means it takes slightly longer than the ADHRR sensor to have complete global coverage. The Fuego volcano is one of the most active in the world, with 20,000 people at risk from pyroclastic flows and ashfall. Significant changes were detected in November and December 2004 and February and December 2005. Data from the AVHRR sensor is transmitted to a local PC-based satellite data reception station. Any thermally anomalous pixels were compared to a simulated mid-infrared signal to see if there were any significant differences. This information needs to be analysed quickly so disaster management plans can be put in place. The AVHRR station can detect and monitor a volcanic event, even though it does not reach a significant volcanic eruption. This provides a means to monitor the background activity of the volcano without needing to visit it. The Anatahan volcano is one of the most active in the archipelago, which means that the island is currently uninhabited. Although geographically remote, eruption plumes of up to 12 kilometers altitude mean that eruptions pose a hazard to Trans-Pacific aircraft. It was monitored thermally during May 2003 eruption using the most MUDA sensors on board the Terra and Aqua platforms. The Moldvolk algorithm was used to analyse each pixel within each image from MUDIS for the presence of pixel and sub-pixel sized high temperature heat sources, indicating whether a hotspot was present. These can only be located within plus or minus one kilometre. This case study is a perfect example for satellite resources being employed in near real time to derive quantitative volcanic eruption parameters.